good afternoon everyone uh, i am here to present uh, as dr amol said the, the, these are two lesions which were uh, mimicking pituitary tumors and in, in the end they were not pituitary tumors and we'll go through the, these two lesions and how they evaluated and how they presented so there were two cases one is uh, adult and another is a child the first one is an adult 43 year old lady resident of delhi presented with headache and uh, secondary hemorrhagia and also she had a uh, history of galactoria for the past one and a half year, years before presentation and she also had features of increased thirst with increased frequency of urination and uh, she was diagnosed as diabetes insipidus and uh, the history had history was there for one year and the examination was almost normal and the visual fields were tested and examination of motor and sensory revealed no significant abnormalities. This was the investigations in overall the patient had pan hypopituitarism on re and uh, the patient was started on replacement doses of thyroxine, vicelone and cabagolin was started for uh, galactoria and she was also on mendrin. And this is the case to a child known case of multiple congenital abnormalities with a global developmental delay and previously operated for bilateral coronal atresia, zonular cataract and achalasia cardia. The child was previously getting treatment from pediatrics and pediatric surgery for the same and uh, the child also had features of uh, hypopituitarism and the child was diagnosed with pan hypopituitarism with features of hypocortisolism when the child presented to emergency and under pediatrics he was getting uh, treated and was referred to neurosurgery for cellar pathology the child also had no significant examination examination abnormalities and the investigations also revealed pan hypopituitarism and there was uh, he was also on replacement doses of thyroxine isone and mendrin so with this with this presentation I'll, I would like to call upon Dr. Prasid, how he evaluated the first case and the second case being referred, it was as it was referred from pediatrics, it, it did not undergo a substantial evaluation. So we'll go through the evaluation done by endocrine for the first case. Thank you, Dr. Ganesh. I'll be presenting the in-hospital course of case one when she was first admitted under us in the Department of Endocrinology. To summarize, she was a 43-year female with history of COVID infection initially, followed eight, year, eight weeks later by sequential appearance of headache, secondary aminoria, galactoria, and on evaluation of these symptoms, she was also found to have a biochemical evidence of hypocortisolemia, hypothyroidism, and growth hormone deficiency. And ultimately, she also uh, developed features of polyuria and polydipsia. Biochemically, she had a low FSH, LH, and estradiol, indicating hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism. Her prolactin was high, indicating a hyperprolactinemia. The basal cortisol and ACTS both were low, indicating secondary hypocortisolemia. The free T4 was low and the TSH was inappropriately normal, indicating secondary hypothyroidism. The IGF-1 was low for her age and gender and the C also had hypernatremia, indicating diabetes insipidus, which was central. So on the background, background of these symptoms, her headache was possibly due to dural stretch caused by a mass in cellar or supracellar region. Here, she developed polyuria di late in the into the course of illness possibly because the initial symptoms of di were masked by hypocortisolemia because as we know that cortisol increases AD, uh, decreases ads secretion from the paraventricular nucleus and also decreases the equaporin 2 expression in the distal convoluted tubule these symptoms of di got masked when c was started on cortisol supplementation after the evidence of hypocortisolemia so, uh, briefly speaking, she had multiple pituitary hormone deficiency, hyperprolactinemia, and central DI. So, uh, when we bring all these three uh, symptom complexes together, the first thing that we doubt is, is it a pituitary adenoma? Because although she didn't have a overt clinical features of hormone excess, at all if it is an adenoma, it could either be a non-functioning pituitary adenoma or a prolactinoma. The features 
as the name suggests non functioning pituitary adenoma usually presents with a mass effect so the multiple pituitary hormone deficiency in this case could be due to compression of the surrounding cells by the enlarging adenoma and the high prolactin in this case could be due to the stock dis distortion caused by caused by macroadenoma however the point against nfpa was the hyperprolactinemia in non functional pituitary adenoma does not last long because as the as shown here uh, the y axis here shows the serum prolactin levels and the x axis shows the time so as the tumor enlarges in size is it causes the distortion of the pituitary stock and cause, uh, causes disinhibition of lactotroph leading to hyperprolactinemia but when the tumor substantially increases in size is it also starts destroying the lactotrophs so the prolactin high prolactin is not sustained for a long period of time but this patient had persistently high prolactin levels indicating that possibly this is not a stock effect the second thing could be a prolactin noma so again the multiple pituitary hormone deficiency could be due to the mass effect by the enlarging tumor and high prolactin itself can be due to the secretion by the tumor but usually what we say is that the tumoral range in the uh, prolactinoma is usually more than 200 but she had less than 200 levels of prolactin and the last thing that was against adenoma was the presence of di diabetes insipidus is very rare with pituitary adenoma it can rarely occur only if there is the enlargement of pars tuberalis which surrounds the stock anterior laterally so the enlargement of pars tuberalis can only cause uh, di at all if there is an anterior pituitary involvement so in this background we at the time of presentation we thought that this is possibly not adenoma but something else so the possible site of lesion depending upon the clinical history and the biochemical findings was localized uh, there we kept four possibilities first was the hypothalamus because hypothalamus as we know is the center for all hormone secretion so any lesion destroying hypothalamus can lead to multiple pituitary hormone deficiency di and also hyperprolactinemia due to disinhibition of the lactotroph similarly the stock which is the uh, connecting link between the hypothalamus and pituitary any lesion in the stock can also cause this picture and as we know that their neurohypophysis is usually gets involved in the uh, pathologies of stock especially the inflammatory pathology it could be a stock lesion with anterior or especially posterior pituitary involvement and finally if there is a lesion involving both the pituitary only anterior pituitary leading to hormonal deficiencies and posterior pituitary leading to di that could also be a possibility however there were few points against these possibilities also like any hypothalamic involvement leads to other features of uh, hypothalamic dysfunctions like behavioral changes memory loss autonomic dysfunction adipsia hypersomnolence hyperphagia morbid obesity these features were not present in our patient also the anterior pituitary pathology can cause transient increase in prolactin due to the destruction of the lactotrophs and release of the prolactin into the circulation but in long term the high prolactin level is not sustained so again our patient had a sustained increase in prolactin so we thought that maybe hypothalamus and the combined involvement of pituitary is not uh, the site of lesion in our case so the what remained was either a stock lesion or a stock with posterior pituitary involvement and the possible pathologies here could be inflammatory infective or neoplastic so with this background uh, sorry the uh, coming to the inflammatory pathology that is hypophysitis it could either be a primary hypophysitis, hypophysitis which is categorized as a lymphocytic granulomatous or xanthomatous hypophysitis or the inflammation of pituitary can occur as a part of a systemic disease such as langerhans cell histiocytosis or non langerhans cell histiocytosis sarcoidosis gp gpa sle igg4 disease or sometimes hypophysitis can also occur due to the inflammatory changes surrounding a structural pituitary lesion such as a neoplastic lesion or a rathkes cleft cyst the neoplastic pathology of the stock or the posterior pituitary here could be aggressive tumors such as germ cell tumors lymphoma cordomas or indolent tumor like pituitoma meningioma craniopharyngioma or a metastasis from breast or lung and the infective pathology could be a tuberculosis with this possibilities in mind we uh, moved ahead with mri cella actually when patient presented to us she already had two mris done at different point of uh, time in the course of her illness the first mri had shown a thickened stalk 
3.5 mm uh, in diameter and homogeneously enhancing centrally located there was absence of posterior pituitary bright spot and the pituitary was symmetrically enlarged with central cystic area of 6 into 3 mm size and a second mri done few months later shows, showed that the stock thickening has increased in size and the uh, and the enhancement uh, the enhancement had also increased and the stock was still centrally located uh, the size of pituitary was almost the same but there was a slight increase in the com central cystic component and a final mri done at the time of presentation to our uh, department we did the mri we showed that the stock thickness thickness had further increased in size but the central cystic areas had decreased in size so seeing the serial course of the uh, mri of the patient we thought that possibly she has an inflammatory lesion which, le which led to some liquefactive changes in the pituitary and which gradually decreased in size however the inflammation is still persisting in the stock leading to the serial increase in the stock thickening in in the mri so the possibility of inflammatory lesion was kept at this point after reviewing her mri so even at this point i would like to discuss about the features differentiating adenoma and hypophysitis although clinically we had kept a very rare possibility of adenoma we are thinking of non adenomatous causes in this patient in adenoma the enlargement is usually asymmetrical the stock is deviated towards the opposite side there is no usually no stock thickening and the posterior bright spot should be present however our patient had non adenomatous features such as a symmetrical enlarged pituitary with a central stock stock thickening and loss of the posterior pituitary bright spot so keeping this there is also a scoring system by proposed by gutenberg et al which gives some negative points and some positive points the negative points favor inflammatory pathology such as a young age pregnant or a postpartum lady thickened stock with a gadolinium enhancement and loss of posterior pituitary bright spot while the positive points favor the adenomatous pathology such as the volume more than 6 cm sphenoid mucosal thickening or a asymmetrical enlargement or heterogeneous enhancement our patient had a score of minus 8 which is still which again point, pointed towards a inflammatory pathology so we decided to further work up patient to look for other etiology first we did a fdg pet scan with a hope to find a other peripheral sites which can be easily biopsied however there were there were no other sites of FDG uptake noted in the body. For infective workup, her MON2 test was positive 25 mm, HIV was negative. CSF analysis showed 10 cells or lymphocytes. There was low glucose and high protein, but gram strain culture, AFB gene expert were negative and ADA was also 2. For inflammatory workup, her ESR and CRP were high. MPO and PR3 ANCA were negative. ANA was 1 plus speckled but NTDS DNA was negative and C3C4 were also normal. Calcium was normal, serum ACE was also normal. For Langerhans cell osteocytosis, we also did multiple sites X-ray, we showed no lytic lesion and no osteosclerotic lesion. For neoplastic workup, we did a serum beta-HCG and serum alpha-fetoprotein, both were normal. We also did a CSF beta-HCG and CSF alpha-fetoprotein, which were also normal. Mammography was uh, showed bilateral Birats 1 and the CSF cytology showed no malignant cells. So after going through all these um, investigations, there were few points suggesting the inflammatory pathology such as a high ESR CRP and I, as I discussed previously, presence of cystic areas in the pituitary which later on decreased in the size and there were some subtle indicators of primary hypophysitis in the patient such as a female gender third to fourth decade age group and the onset of symptoms eight weeks after COVID infection. So we have some anecdotal case reports of post-COVID hypophysitis and in a study 51% patient with COVID had anti-pituitary and anti-hypothalamic antibodies. Although these antibodies have not been validated, uh, there was a study which found uh, up to 50% patient may have such antibodies and also it has been shown in autopsy series that there is an abundant uh, AC2 receptor expression in hypothalamus and pitu uh, in pituitary region. The fact uh, the points against inflam uh, inflammatory pathology were lack of FDG avidity in the stock. However, a low grade or indolent type of tumor may not show any FDG uptake. So even this finding will not absolutely rule out a neoplastic uh, 
sorry inflammatory pathology and lack of other associated other associated features of systemic disease causing secondary hypophysitis we had extensively evaluated patient for all the systemic association there were no clinical features and no lab findings suggestive of any systemic disease in this patient for infective pathologies the points favoring infective pathologies were csf evidence of lymphocytic pleocytosis with hypoglycorrhea and high protein montu positivity and there was a history of mdr tv in the husband the points against were the csf afb and gene expert were negative ada was not high there was no meningeal enhancement in the mri no basal exudates no tuberculoma in the brain parenchyma and no evidence of tv elsewhere in the body for neoplastic pathology the stock the uh, stock was homogeneously enhanced although this is a non specific find, finding it is only a soft pointer towards a neoplasm and there was a progressive increase in the stock which indicated that possibly that may be ongoing neoplastic pathology the points against was lack of fdg avidity in the lesion as i discussed previous this is not a strong hard sign a lack of other markers like for germ cell tumors the beta hcg and alpha fetoprotein were normal however the possibility of non germinomatous germ cell tumor would still be there for lymphoma there was no uh, evidence of monoclonal lymphocytes in the csf no peripheral lymphadenopathy again the possibility of primary cns lymphoma involving only the stock without leptomeningeal inv uh, involvement causing no change in the csf could still be a possibility for metastasis there was no fdg avid lesion the mammography was bilateral birats one so although the possibility of inflammatory lesion was higher compared to other pathology occasionally neoplastic lesions as i discussed previously can have surrounding inflammation and can present as a hypophysitis which can be missed if treated empirically so after consultation with the neurosurgery team a decision to proceed with the biopsy of this lesion was taken because there was no availability of alternate sites for the biopsy there was a progressive disease in the serial mri some condition could not be ruled out with certainty like monosystemic presentation of a systemic disease or neoplastic conditions like germinoma primary cns lymphoma with leptomeningeal involvement could not be ruled out so after this i would like to uh, invite the radiology team to for further presentation uh, thank you dr prasid uh, our first case a 43 year old female uh had a first mri in aims in uh, october 2022 which showed a large uh, cellular supracellular mass lesion which is t1 iso intense t2 heterogeneously hyper intense enlarged the cella was uh, did not show any hemorrhage or calcification which is seen as no swi blooming neither any diffusion restriction this lesion showed uh, an uh, a homogeneous enhancement involving within uh, the pituitary within the cella the stock and the hypothalamus along with slight enhancement in the precellular precellular dura and the clivus dura the lesion was not hypervascular as is seen on uh, asl imaging uh comparing comparing it with the previous images that the patient had uh, which were from outside and patient only had films uh, this was the cystic lesion that uh, dr prasid mentioned and uh, which was uh, not uh, there in the present scan meaning that the inflammation had uh, increased with time but uh, during the uh, follow up over the over the whole year the lesion had largely remained of the same size except that it was cystic necrotic and the cystic necrotic areas filled up a patient had a ct under us and it showed a homogeneously enhancing lesion within the cella and the supracellular region with the en uh, enlargement of the cella the uh, differential that we kept for this uh, lesion were the possibility of an adenoma in a 43 year old female our first possibility could have been that of an adenoma mainly because the lesion had a had an epicenter in the cella the pituitary was not seen separately it was cystic necrotic and the few areas in the superior surface were nodular but the points that were against the possibility of an adenoma were that the infundibulum the pituitary stalk was enlarged it was enhancing and the lesion showed a uh, persian intense enhancement the other lesion that could have been a uh, possibility in a 43 year old female could have been that of a papillary cr craniopharyngeoma mainly because of the age and the non calcified solid cystic nature of the cellular supracellular mass but again the intense enhancement the cellular epicenter and infundibular involvement stood against it to complete uh, the list of uh, okay the uh, another possibility could have been that of an inflammatory hypophysitis uh, mainly because and there were a number of points number of features that favored the possibility of it were like the pituitary and the infundibulum both were enlarged 
and they were intensely enhancing there was pre-seller and clive dural enhancement and that there was loss of the posterior pituitary bright, bright spot only the fact that there was heterogeneous enhancement within the lesion stood slightly against the possibility but then we were very convinced that it was inflammatory another possibility could have been that of a germ cell tumor mainly because uh, there is involvement of the stock along with the infundibulum but again the age the heterogeneous enhancement and absence of the pineal region involvement stood against it to complete the list of lesions, uh, the less likely possibilities were that of a sp uh, spindle cell oncocytoma because of the cellular supracellular homogeneity enhancing mass, but infundibular enhancement stood against it. At this age, another possibility could th have been that of a metastasis, mainly uh, because of the age and the intense enhancement, but absence of other lesions and no primary history of a malignancy stood against this possibility. The unlikely possibilities and to complete the list were that of an apoplexy and a rathkeclips cyst. The other case, other case was a four-year-old male, which had the same uh, similar findings of a cellular supracellular mass lesion enlarging the cella, uh, which was isointense on T1, heterogeneously hyperintense on T2, but here it showed a slight diffusion restriction within the lesion. The lesion was uh, showed homogeneous enhancement with uh, central uh, necrotic areas and slight enhancement over the posterior aspect of the uh, stalk and as well as the hypothalamus. The lesion was slightly hyperdense on a uh, CT scan and showed homogeneous enhancement. We had a previous uh, scan from the for the patient which was uh, uh, approximately 12 months back and uh, lesion did not show any increase in interval size. Possibilities uh, for this lesion in a 4 year old uh, male could again have been that of an adenoma mainly because of the similar reason that I quoted before such as the cellular enlargement that the pituitary was not seen separately, it was cystic necrotic, but again, the infundibulum enlargement and enhancement and the intense enhancement of the lesion stood against it. Another possibility could have been that of an adamantinomatous uh, craniopharyngioma, but absence of calcification, epicenter in the cella, intense enhancement of the lesion, and uh, involvement of the pituitary stock and infundibulum stood against the possibility. So our uh, most likely possibility for this lesion was again an inflammatory hypophysitis due to any, due to any uh, of the reasons mentioned. Because uh, the pituitary was enlarged, the infundibulum was enlarged, it was enhancing, it showed intense enhancement, pre-cellular clivaldural enhancement, same as before. At this stage, another possibility, a very likely possibility could have been that of a germ cell tumor, mainly because of uh, the location of the areas involved, but absence of the pineal enhancement and heterogeneous enhancement stood against it. To complete, to complete the list, a very unlikely possibility for this lesion could have been that of a rathke cleft cyst due to reasons mentioned. Thank you. I would like to in invite Dr. Ganesh to continue the talk further. So as we saw now, saw till now, <clears throat> two lesion, uh, two were the differentials basically. First is of hypophysitis, inflammatory pathology, and adenoma was always in a doubt, uh, considering the radiological evidences quoted by uh, Dr. Savya. So now we proceeded on to uh, surgery. The first case was basically aimed at uh, biopsy because it was almost, uh, almost more than more than doubt that it, it was an inflammatory lesion and the first lesion was approached to a transpenoidal route so we can see the patient in prone patient in supine position with uh, we are approaching through the right nostril so we are uh, actually into the cella and uh, it is to be noted that the cellular lesion most uh, which we mostly encounter are pituitary adenomas which are which usually doesn't resemble this. They are, they are usually soft and easily suckable with the uh, suction, and it it does it is not adherent to the surrounding structures, which we can be which can be seen in this case. The consistency of the tumor is also it is also it is uh, it is firm, and uh, it is not more, much it is not much vascular. And uh, considering this, we took a we uh, proceeded to go with a frozen section biopsy. And the frozen also revealed the same thing as uh, as an inflammatory lesion. And with this in mind, we just took a biopsy and we just concluded the case. And the patient was referred back to endocrine. And this is the second case, the child. Considering the non-pneumatized status of the cella, we proceeded on to a transcranial route. And uh, after exposure, exposure, this is the... Uh, transcranial approach and we can see the optic nerves on either side of the cella with right IC on this side. So we proceeded on to uh, this uh, this lesion but we, we were initially uh, initially of the view opinion to 
remove the tumor as such but when we encounter the tumor we found it it is firm and it is not the normal garden variety pituitary which we usually encounter day in and day out so we encount we did a frozen section for this also which also revealed the inflammatory pathology and we also had some purulent material draining out of the tumor so we also concluded this case with a biopsy and uh, we did not proceed this this lesion had little bit of vascularity compared to the first case the vascularity was mildly increased not so much but we can see the purulent material clearly coming out of the tumor so we took a biopsy for this case also and we we just we didn't do anything else for this case so after doing the biopsy and having a frozen suggestive of inflammatory pathology uh, the patients were uh, the patients were dis one first patient was discharged and sent back to endocrine and the second patient was discharged and uh, now let us see what the pathology report came out to be i would like dr sumanto to proceed on this thank you Uh, thank you, Dr. Ganesh. Uh, so this is the first case, 43-year-old female, cellar supracellular mass. So the uh, unfortunately, I don't have the frozen picture. The picture quality was not good. So this is the permanent section. This is showing uh, normal anterior, anterior pituitary. These are the various uh, types of cells. So this is the, there is no uh, evidence of adenoma. These are uh, basically in normal pituitary we see two types of cells. There are uh, eosinophilic cell and basophilic cells. So these are normal pituitary and background we see a lot of inflammation. These are mostly lymphocytes and plasma cells. So on higher power, so these are the uh, normal pituitary <coughs> acidophilic and basophilic cells and uh, they are almost encroached by the lymphocytes and plasma cells. Background we see a lot of these inflammatory cells and they are also encroaching upon the uh, this normal pituitary uh, epithelial cells. So we did immunohistochemistry that was LCA leukocyte uh, common antigen for the inflammatory marker. So this is almost forming like a follicle around the pituitary cell. Uh, <coughs> further immunohistochemistry, T cell markers were predominantly positive. This is CD3. Then CD20 was also uh, few, few cells are positive. Then for some plasma cell, that is a plasma cell marker that was CD138. On uh, morphology, there are no evidence of any necrosis or granuloma. So, uh, we were not thinking about any possibility of tuberculosis. But still, we did uh, gel Nansen stain for acid first bacilli, but it was negative. So, with the histomorphology and immunohistochemistry, finally, we thought it is possibly a lymphocytic hypophysitis. Coming to the second case, that was four year old males, uh, cellular supracellular mass. So, this is the uh, multiple fragments of the biopsy. Not general, uh, we could not see any normal pituitary, but there are a lot of uh, these are <coughs> predominantly these are the fibrocollagenous tissue and these are the inflammatory uh, com components of the in inflammatory cells. So uh, higher power, we see same lymphocytes and plasma cells. No, uh, these are predominantly plasma cells and few uh, lymphocytes. So we uh, there, but again there are no uh, evidence of any necrosis in uh, granuloma. So, because of the higher uh, number of plasma cells, we did some stain for IgG and IgG4. There was no evidence of any story from fibrosis to call it IgG4 disease. IgG, G, IgG was positive, but IgG4 was totally negative. Then, uh, to rule out a germ cell tumor, because it may be sometimes masked by a lot of inflammation, we did a, a germ cell marker, SAL4, that was negative. Uh, we uh, wanted to rule out Langerhans cell histocytosis also, although uh, morphologically it was not that evident. Uh, so we did uh, some Langerhans cell marker like CD1A and Langerhans, uh, both were negative. So finally, we could not come to a uh, specific diagnosis. It is possibly an inflammatory lesion. And the diagnosis is, we don't know actually, We're not sure what is the diagnosis. Uh, so it can be tuberculosis, maybe some area may be missed possibly because there was no granuloma, no necrosis. So without granuloma, necrosis, only based on only inflammatory cell, we cannot call it a tuberculosis. Yes, sir, chronic inflammatory. Uh, yes, sir, can be, but we did not see any normal pituitary. Uh, 
for discussion part two. So uh, I would like to discuss SL, uh, SLR lesion, whichever it is. We uh, initially will have to evaluate for the clinical features, which could be compressive symptoms, headache, or visual disturbances. And uh, visual visual evaluation for visual acuity and visual field examination. Symptoms pertinent to hypo or hyper secretion of pituitary hormones, and other cranial nerve dysfunctions can also be present. And any pituitary mass can be present with uh, features of. Uh, Features of hormone hypersecretion, which I told earlier, and uh, it could be managed symptom managed accordingly. And the features, other other features to be noted are the visual field, palsies for other cranial nerves, headache, and endocrine abnormalities. And MRI is to be the key factor in differential diagnosis and management of other parasolar lesions, which includes cysts ranging from Rathke cyst to craniopharyngiomas and arachnoid epidermoid and pineal region cyst entering into the cella region and other neoplasms can also present uh, as mentioned earlier by uh, Dr. Savya and vascular lesions like apoplexy aneurysms can also present. Inflammatory lesions like hypophysitis, amyloidosis, sarcoidosis and granulomatous polyangitis can also be there and infections tracking down till cella can also be there. And metastasis, especially from breast and lung, are uh, most vulnerable for metastasis to pituitary. And other lesions can be ecto ectotopic pituitary and fibrous dysplasia. And non secreting lesions can be microadenoma or macroadenoma. And in all non functional pituitary, macroadenomas can be managed whether if it is symptomatic or associated with <coughs> mass effect. Those cases go for a surgery. And uh, the pituitary mass with secretion. Uh, se se for the sake, uh, to call it a functional, we classify them as uh, prolactinomas, acromeg acromegalic tumors, Cushing's or thyrotropin secreting tumors based on the hormone secreted by them. And these can be, these are to be evaluated in all, all these cell pathologies. And the base to be, base of this, this prolactinoma is a, uh, is a tumor which can be medically managed. And if it is not responding or with a elevated uh, prolactin, persistent on medical management or causing mass effect can proceed with a surgery, surgical management. So in this case, management of lymphophysitic hypophysitis, main treatment is of high dose steroids. And it is to be mentioned that it is a rare case and there are very few reports regarding this, uh, regarding the lymphophysitic hypophysitis. And the odds of recovery of anti pituitary hormone is more with high dose steroids. And MRI findings uh, in this patient also resolved with steroids and surgery is as in this case it is to be proceeded only if diagnosis is in doubt i would like to call upon dr amol to give give the closing remark thank you thanks ganesh so the idea is that every clinician uh, physician or surgeon needs to be aware of these conditions although they are rare rarely encountered in clinical practice but uh, high index of suspicion, uh, suspicion is the key to look at uh, certain parameters like you know present uh, uh, present uh, presentation with diabetes in such patients or loss of posterior pituitary uh, bright spot or the, the thickening of the stalk these can be markers clinical and radiological and uh, hormonal markers which can actually suggest that it's an alternative diagnosis because as a surgeon if you go in and try to be radical and these lesions inflammatory specifically can be stuck to the carotids and can lead to catastrophic outcomes if you're not aware of it so that's the basic idea that we wanted to present these couple of cases so now I would like to invite uh, Dr. Suri for the final uh, comments, if any. Thank you. And I, I think more important for the residents and for the young, you know, the trainees that it is, uh, if you see the MRIs, they are just spotters. They look like pituitary adenomas. The problem is these patients actually present with panhypopituitarism and DI. If you have a patient with a pituitary adenoma, which has DI on presentation, that means the stock effect is uh, like you nicely mentioned, the stock effect part is over and there's pine hypopetitism, but the size is not so huge. Then you must suspect lympho uh, lymphocytic hypocytis. It's an autoimmune disease. It is completely curable. It is a long-term pulse steroid therapy. Yes, the diagnosis is a challenge. And you see on MRI an, uh, enhancement, no pituitary adenoma has enhancement of the stock and the hypothalamus. If you have that, this should be a first suspicion. So now normally if uh, I usually give a trial of steroid before even going for a biopsy. This is what we try to do. But in these cases, this were, I think everything was done and then we came to that suggestion. 
And regarding that pus thing coming out, sir, I think most must have been uh, the necrotic part, the central necrotic part. Though it is on imaging also doesn't look like tubercular. But I think in both these cases, now we can give uh, high dose pulse therapies of steroids. It's usually long term. Some people have even tried azathioprine also and other immunosuppressants for that because it's autoimmune. But usually they, they completely come back. And they, and, but if you are radical, the problem... The problem is if you are thinking, if the surgeon is thinking that it's a pituitary adenoma and it's hard because many pituitary adenomas can, can be fibrous and it becomes radical. So he lifelong he's going, the patient will go into a DI and replacement. Thank you. Any comments, any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the kind. Classical lymphocytic hypervagitis, you can give, you should have given steroid before uh, surgery. I'm not sure, but you're the better yeah, person. But the second case, I think they should not be treated. This may be something else. It may be germinoma. It may be some other conditions. Steroid will change this picture. I think you should follow. If the symptoms are not there. I remember the case. The gender, even the gender guy, Earlier also, we called it inflammatory. Inflammatory, there was granulomas also, and uh, he followed up after six months. He has a big germinoma. Is a child hypophysitis is a little bit uh, very uncommon, no? Yeah, but if you see, um, female, it's okay. But I think and good that Ganesh showed us the videos because our pathologists always uh, criticize us that we are not giving the right samples, and I have pathologists at home also. So. And you can see that between the two optics nerve, there was only one 15 member blade that can be accommodated, and we could hardly take a biopsy from there. So okay. it is. <laughs> yeah. So these patients do well, but they need long term. It is there. But you're right, they may go into floppal view. So in in the end, I would like to thank uh, my colleagues, uh, Dr. Prasid, Dr. Savya, and Dr. Somanto. And uh, the cella lesions are uh, to be managed multidisciplinary and uh, combining departments of endocrine, neurosurgery, neuropath, and neurored will be will benefit the most for the patient. Thank you. Excellent.